Hey guys, welcome back and welcome to a new course. My name is Avilash, you're watching Selenium Express and from today, we are going to start our new course on Spring MBC, but this is gonna be the Spring MBC Intermediate course. So this is so much more than a Spring MBC course. So the tagline for this course is gonna be, it is not just a Spring MBC course. Why I'm saying it? So you have to stay with me till the end of this video to know about it, okay? So this course is gonna be the continuation of my Spring MBC basic course. So here we're gonna talk about a lot of advanced stuff. So you have to make sure that before you continue with this course, you have completed my Spring MBC basic course or you have some kind of working experience with the Spring MBC earlier, right? Okay, so as I said, this is not just a Spring MBC course. It is so much more than that. So I'm gonna give you a walkthrough that what we are going to basically do in this course, right? So basically, I'm gonna talk about the goal for this course, what we're going to achieve and what we're going to do here. And also, I'll give you an application walkthrough, the application that we're going to develop here in this course, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough. I'll show you the wireframe and the requirements for this application. Also, I'm gonna tell you how you can get support whenever you get stuck while coding, right? Uh, so things will not work in the first shot. You obviously need support and I'm here to help. And I'm gonna tell you here that how you can get support, okay? And also I'm gonna tell you what are the different types of rules that you have to follow when you are going to code with me for this particular course. And also in the end, I'm gonna tell you what's next. So once you complete this course, uh, what's coming up for you guys? So I'm gonna give you a complete walkthrough uh, so that you guys can decide this course is right for you or not. So let's get started and let's get start with the goal. Okay, so what is the basic goal that we have for this course? All coming up right after this intro. Now let's talk about the goal for this course. So let me come step by step right here. So first of all, this course is going to cover a lot of Spring MBC features. So if you remember, in our basic course, we spoke about how to set up Spring MBC and get our basic thing done. But right here, we'll go a step ahead and we will understand some of the important Spring MBC feature like Spring MBC Java configuration, Spring MBC exception handling. We are also going to talk about the form validation, the Spring MBC data binding, which is pretty, pretty important. And like, uh, we will also understand the concept like interceptor and so much more. So here the goal is to cover all the Spring MBC important concept. And as I told you before, this is not just a Spring MBC course. Why? Because here I'm gonna talk about different tools and we are also going to talk about different modules in Spring. It is not only about the Spring MBC right here, also, we're going to talk about Spring Core, Spring JDBC, Spring NBC, Spring AOP, Spring Security. We are going to integrate all these modules with Spring MBC and we are going to get the thing done. So this is going to give us a lot of hands-on. So that's why I'm saying this is not just a Spring MBC course. And apart from this, we are also going to talk about the Maven and the Git. So we are going to talk about the Maven and the Git tool. So for now, uh, the Maven and the Git course is on the way. We are recording that. I am making the Maven course. My friend Ashish is making the Git course. He has a lot of hands-on on Git. So right now, these courses are on making. So that's a bad news right now, but don't worry. Uh, those videos are also going to come online pretty, pretty soon. So apart from these modules and these tools, what's next? So once we complete these modules, we are going to talk about the Spring ORM and the Spring REST. So these are two important modules of Spring and I don't want to mess these things off with all these modules. So I'm going to keep them separate for now, but later on, once we are done with the Spring JDBC, I'm going to drop that DAO layer where I have done my JDBC code and I'm going to bring in the Spring ORM with the Hibernate configuration. So we're going to do a lot of configuration, a lot of code with Spring ORM and Spring REST, but not for now. Our focus is to cover up these many modules and this many tools for now. These are still a hell lot of things that we need to cover. So I'm so much excited how we're going to progress and I hope you are too. So all these things we are going to cover up by doing two different applications. So what we are going to do here, we are going to make 
two different application application one and application two so why two different application because in the application one i'm going to code it from the scratch i'm going to code it with you okay so so while building this application i will talk more and i'll code less the meaning for this is that i'm going to code with you guys from the scratch and i'm going to explain everything line by line you know to make the thing easy for you so the goal here is to make you familiar with the concept not the standard so we're going to explore the things we're going to learn the things right here and once we are completed with the application one i am going to make a different application by myself so this application two i'll give it to you i'll code it by myself i'll give it to you and you guys are going to do the enhancement and the defect fix for this application so you're going to get obviously a lot of hands-on whenever you're going to work on the application too because you will already get the exposure uh, of working with different concept in application one and while working in application two i'll give you an existing application uh, and you are going to do the defect fixes for this application and also you are going to introduce some more new feature to that application right uh, just like a real-time application so here i will code more and i'll talk less i will not at all talk there i'll just give you the code you guys will already know the concept in the application one so there is nothing much to explain in application two whenever you're going to work on that and the next thing here is that while while working on the application two the goal here is to focus on the standard so uh, in the application one we'll focus on the concept in the application two while we're doing that while we're building that we'll focus on the standard okay so uh, for the application one i'm going to make a love calculator application weird right so why this love calculator application because i'm pretty much fed up with the traditional application that i make for the courses like a a student management application and employee management application or a library management application uh, that's pretty much boring these days so i get some suggestion from the people who are following my course uh, just just create some application out of the blue so i think let's create a love calculator application so you will have a username you will have a crush name and we'll calculate the percentage of love and we'll add some new feature to that particular application and for the application too we're going to make an audio player so I'm thinking to bring in the Spring REST and the Spring ORM module to the application uh, 2 so that we'll make a good audio player right there and hopefully that will work as well. So the intention here is that we will learn through the requirements. We will just not learn the concept we will learn through the requirements. I'll give you some requirement hey this is the page you need to develop and we are going to learn through that okay and i will not teach you guys i will implement and also uh, you and me we're going to code together obviously uh, so for the first application we both need to code together okay so so much of talking so right now the next thing is what we are going to achieve here so let me come step by step and let me tell you that why you should take this course obviously this is free you are not going to pay a penny for me but at least you should know why you need to invest your time here in this course what's the benefit you are going to get out of it let me come one by one first thing is you are going to get a lot of a lot of spring mbc hands-on and we are going to get a lot of real-time exposure as we're going to work in two different applications and as we're going to implement the thing by ourselves that's going to be pretty much exciting to do and also we'll get that real-time exposure we are also going to understand a different debugging technique and we are going to work with different tools so this point is really really important it always says whenever you are going to code it is 90 percent of debugging and 10 percent of coding so we are going to learn a lot of debugging technique because because we're going to implement a different types of logic here and obviously we're going to get a lot of problem a lot of challenges and we're going to fix it by ourselves you and me we're going to code together and we're going to fix it so the next thing here is we are going to handle different scenarios and challenges okay so we are ready to face it okay guys so before i go ahead and i'll give you an application walkthrough two different points i want to make here so what we're going to achieve once we complete this course is you will get the eligibility for self-learning right i'm talking about the spring modules 
so after this module i'm not going to spoon feed you guys so as of now here in my course even i'm getting mail from you guys that why you are spoon feeding us just because um, i do not want any beginner who is watching this uh, he is not going to understand something so that's why i'm making things pretty pretty simple for you guys but once this module is complete as you are going to integrate a lot of spring modules by yourself after this you know any challenges you'll get any modules any new module of spring if you're, if you're going to get to learn it by yourself you are going to obviously do it by yourself you do not need me at the time right so you will you will have that eligibility to work alone after this course and also <laughs> the most demanded thing from my viewers is why not spring boot so once this course is complete we are going to jump to the spring boot you know what i hate spring boot auto configuration the reason why i am not using the spring boot here to teach you spring core or spring mbc is i hate that auto configuration feature of spring boot so i love it as a developer but i hate it as a teacher why because if I use the Spring Boot, you will never know there is a concept exist called dispatcher servlet. You will never know there is a concept exist called data source because all these things will be auto configured by Spring Boot and Spring Boot will make your life easy, which I do not want. I want you to struggle so that whenever you are going to learn Spring Boot, that it will be just like a piece of cake for you because you already know all those concepts and whenever you are going to do things, when the things will be automatically done, you will you will feel happy as a developer okay then spring boot is managing these things behind the scene you can feel that concept at the time right so might be you can understand and can relate to my world whenever we're going to learn spring boot just after this course okay okay so right now it's time to show you the requirements right now i'm going to show you the application that we're going to develop right so i have just done a very high level abstract kind of wireframe so wireframe means uh, you know i'm going to show you the requirements that we're going to do right so i'm going to walk you through some slides so that you will get a complete picture right now that what kind of application that we're going to build and trust me this is a very funny application i'm just making it for fun so uh, let's have a walkthrough okay. okay so right now let me give you a walk through the application that we are going to create so as you can see right now i am inside the login page of my application as i said we are going to create a love calculator application and here we will have a username and a password and once we have that we can actually sign into our system if we do not have a username and password we are going to click on this register link and once we click the register here we'll get a registration form and here in this form we're going to fill in our name username password and all these details and once we hit register we'll get a username and we'll get a password okay so right now let's imagine that you have filled in all the details and you are going to hit register here we will again go back to our login form and here we'll have a username and password this time we're going to fill in our username and password and we are going to hit sign in Cool. So right now we are in our home page of this application. So again in the home page we have a small form. So we will have our username field, we'll have our cross name field. We're going to fill in all the details and we are going to hit this checkbox here called I am agreeing that this is for fun. So once you fill in all the details and you hit calculate, you will go to the result page of our application. Okay, so in our result page you can actually see two different sections. Here we are actually predicting the result and here we are giving some different feature to our application. Okay, so in this section, the user is going to see uh, the result that he got. Let's say the user has entered Jack as username and Rose as cross name. So the result came here is friend. So if the user want, he can actually send this result to his email ID by clicking this link called send result to email. So here the user is going to enter the email ID that he want to send the result to and once you fill in the email ID and he will hit the send button, the result will be sent to his email ID. Right now if the user want, he can click on log out and come out of this application. Okay, so right now let me do a login again. I'll fill in username and password. Let me say I'll do a sign in and uh, let's say I'm again filling in Jack for your name, Crush for Crush name 
and I'm hitting this checkbox and I'm doing calculate. I'll go to the result page again. And here, let's say the user want to check all the results that he got from our application. So he can click this link called check user history. Now he'll get a table here filled in with all the data, right? So what's his user ID, how many result he has, and he'll have his name, the crush name and the result. So right now, if the user want, he can actually delete one of the record from here. Now I can see once he deleted a record, there is only three records present here and before there was four. So right now the user actually can log out from the system. Cool. So this is some kind of abstract idea that I do have for this application. But when we are going to code, we may add some new feature to this application. But the goal here is to integrate different Spring modules and to provide you a very high level understanding of Spring framework. Okay, for an example, this is our login page of our application. And here we are going to implement the Spring security module, right? And let's say the user is clicking on register. Here he is actually getting a form. So here we are going to implement the Spring MVC form tag. And also we are going to do Spring MVC data binding right here. Let's say when the user click register, he goes back again to the form and he will fill in the username and password and he is doing sign in. Right now, again here, we are getting a form, but our intention here is to make the data binding working. We need to handle the exception. And also, what about if the username is going to be blank? What about the user leaves the cross name blank? What about the user is not hitting this checkbox? Then we have to make sure that we are doing a proper form validation. Right. So we will include Spring MVC form validation. We'll create our own custom form validation and we will do a whole lot of thing. OK, cool. So right now, let's say if the user is hitting calculate and he want to send the result that he is getting out of our application to his email ID, then here we actually need to implement the Spring Mail API to get our job done. So we are going to learn about how to integrate the Spring Mail API with our Spring MVC application. Okay, for an, another example, I can say that if the user want to check the user history, right now we are facing all the user data that we have inside our database. So we have to make sure that whenever the user is filling in the data and he's hitting the calculate button, we need to also store the result inside the database. Okay, so we're going to store the data, we're going to face the data and also if the user wants, they can actually delete the data. So I am actually going to use the Spring JDBC to do all these things in the beginning. And after that, we are going to drop the Spring JDBC stuff and we're going to bring in the Hibernate or the Spring ORM module to get the things done. Okay, so it looks pretty simple, but we have to integrate a lot of Spring modules. So I want to make this application as simple as I can. But in the same time, the goal here is to integrate different Spring modules. Just don't watch these videos, code it. After each video, after each single video, you make sure you are going to code the same thing. Just do not watch the videos, otherwise it is going to be boring after three or four videos because you guys will feel that, okay, I can do everything, but that will not work whenever you are going to code. So try to implement. This is tested and proven. Things are not going to work in the first shot. Try it, just do not watch. And the next thing is pretty important. Do the analysis before you code. Take a paper, write it down. What you are trying to code here. Get a clear vision. Okay, this is the thing that I need to code. And after that, you can start coding. Just do not see my screen and start typing, uh, you know, in the computer of yours. That's going to never work. You need to understand what you are trying to code. And for that, you have to do analysis and you have to get the thing sorted and you need to see your paper and you need to do coding, right? Do a proper analysis. That is pretty, pretty, pretty important. Just do not see my code and type it in your computer. Okay, so that's it. So I want to thank you 
for now for taking this course or showing interest in this course and i'm going to see you on this course called spring mbc intermediate So a whole lot of good things in the store and I hope that you guys are pretty much excited for this course and I'm really really excited and pumped up. So let's get into the course and let's get started.